So here we've got our module, and we are on exercise one, repairing color. Step one was to, uh, if we go down to the instructions here, and so in this module you'll see I have the link to the, to the first part of the video, okay? Step one was to download the original file, we've done that. Step two is to follow the instructions to repair the damaged photo. I've done that part already. So now step three is to do colorization. So let me open up these instructions. Um, these are an online PDF. I will probably just download the PDF here and open that. Okay, well it just opens it up apparently. So, as we see here, these are the same instructions, only after you've done the repair. So this was the before, this is the after on the repair. Let me open up mine. Okay, so here's my repaired image. Now, if you remember, you should always be keeping an original, unedited copy of your file before doing any work to it. So that was the before, this is the after. We've not only repaired the image, but we've added some um, noise reduction, some contrast and sharpening um, back into the photo. I'm going to call this curves because that was curves. Okay, so that's all the repairs. So what I'm going to do is take all of those repairs that I did and just group them all together. So what I'm going to do here is I'll just select all these all these layers that went into the repair and I will click the little folder to make a group. And then that group is going to just be my repair group. Okay? Now I'm going to duplicate that group. If I, with that group selected, press Command J, I will duplicate that group, and I'm going to call this colorizing. Okay, and I'm going to take all those layers and just merge them down by going to Layer, Merge Group. Okay, so now I've got one uh, final layer that I. Um, have all my corrections in and I can start doing colorizing. So you'll notice I can even turn off my repair group now because I've got this new layer that I'm working with. Okay, so if I go to the instructions here, it's saying repairs and tonal adjustments should be made before colorizing the photo. Okay, we've got that done. All selections should be made from this repair layer. Okay, so let's go ahead and rename this to repair. Keep our files organized here. <coughs> And it says, make a loose selection around the area to be colorized. So it's using the example of the face. Let me go ahead and just, I will use this uh, quick selection tool right here to make a loose selection around the face, making sure that I get it all in there. The facial colors, nope. Facial color is going to be the same as the um, skin color, obviously. In fact, I'm not gonna use that tool to make the selection. I'll just use an ellipse. Elliptical Mars key tool. Okay, that's my selection. I'm going to nudge it over a little bit with the arrow keys. Okay, I'm going to make sure I get all of his neck in there. Okay, so I've got a loose selection around the area to be colorized, which is his face. And then I'm going to press Command J to put this into its own layer. And I'm going to call this layer face, obviously. Okay, so I made that selection, Command J just duplicates what I have selected, which is this facial area here. Okay. Note, the marching ants that define a selection will disappear in this process. So once I duplicate that, the marching ants go away. Okay, so what you can do to get those back is just Command click on the layer, which is just to select the pixels in that layer. The other thing you can do to get those back is to right click um, if your Mac is set up to right click, you can command click or on a Windows right click and go to select pixels. Okay, right click, select pixels, and that will select the pixels in that layer. Okay.
Okay. Okay, and then press Shift F5 to bring up the fill dialog box. So what we've done now is we've selected the pixels in our face layer, okay, and we have an active selection on those, and then we're going to fill this area with color. So the um, shortcut for that on a Mac is Shift F5, probably the same on a Windows machine. Okay, and it brings up this fill dialog box. Okay, and we're going to fill the contents with a color, okay, and then um, we're going to change the blending mode of that fill. So what I have to do to get this color selection box that the instructions show is reselect this drop down and click color again. I know color is already selected, but if you click color again, you'll notice it comes up with a color picker box, okay? So in here, they have a predetermined um, color to use, and they call it face 96. Don't assume that typing face in here is ever going to always come up with a good color, but it's actually just a piece of luck that that works out. Okay, so face 96 is the color we're using. Um, notice if I start moving this around, it's not face anymore. Okay, it just happens to kind of align with this group of colors. I'm going to just kind of find a good color that works as a good skin color for this guy. Okay, hit OK to select that color as my fill. Now you don't see it anywhere, but after you hit OK, that's the color it's using to fill. Okay, and then um, we're going to change the, the blending mode to color. Okay, so instead of this being at normal, we're going to scroll down and select color. And so what it's going to do is it's going to um, fill this area with color on a color blending mode. And I'll show you in a little bit more detail in a bit how that's going to work. And it says to keep um, the opacity at 100% and press OK. So we did that. So notice it has filled the area that I had selected with this color as a blending mode. Now, if I were to reselect that those pixels and I go to the fill dialog box again by pressing shift F5 if I instead just do normal on this fill you'll see what happens is it just fills all the pixels with that color that's not what we want obviously right or is it we'll get more into that later but for the purposes of what we're doing right now we do a couple steps here there we go okay so for the purposes of what we're doing now this is fine okay so following these instructions we get this um, tonal face filled in with some color with a color blending mode okay and then it says to um, use a layer mask to refine the selection don't forget the whites of the eyes so when it says use a layer mask to refine the selection obviously I only want this um, face tonal color to be um, applied to the face and not the rest of the image, right? So what I will do here is select, it might be hidden for you guys here. Okay. So what I'll do here is select this little icon to create a new mask in the layer okay and then what I'll do is I will select the brush make sure I'm using black and I can switch between these colors with the X button make sure I'm using black in fact let's see okay I can see what I'm when I'm pressing. Okay, so X will switch between those colors. And then I've got a soft brush. Notice how it's the hardness is set to zero. And, and that can be kind of good when you're working um, with a low resolution photo here. So I'm just going to start painting out. Remember black hides, white reveals. I'm going to start using some black color to start painting out some of this color except for where I want it to be. So I just want it to be um, on the face and the skin of the neck here. I'm 
just start going around and basically it's erasing the color but really it's hiding it. If I were to turn this mask off we could see that color again. So I'm just going to start going around erasing any traces of the color outside of his face. Just continue on doing that. All the way around. I like to work from kind of uh, more general to more detailed usually. Up here it's a little bit weird because he adds what seems to be a little bit of a receding hairline. So I'm going to kind of leave some of that color in the hair on that side and let it be there. And then when we go to put in the actual hair color, um, we'll decide what looks best in that area. Just using the bracket keys to change the size of my brush as need be. Some parts it's hard to tell where he actually has hair and where it's the skin, but we'll get to that when we go to colorizing the hair. Okay, so <clears throat> now we've got his face. We need to take the color out of his um, eyes because obviously his skin color isn't there in his eyes. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller and make sure I. Getting all the color out, except for where his skin is. Just pressing Alt in the scroll wheel to 
to scroll in and out. Oops. Okay, now the color is out of his eyes also. So now it's applied only to his face. Okay, so. <clears throat> Don't worry that the subject now resembles an Oompa Loompa. This can be adjusted using the blending modes in opacity to achieve the desired flesh tone. Okay, so <clears throat> now what I can do with this layer is I can reduce the opacity. Okay, and if I you know reduce the opacity quite a bit, then the then the um, flesh tones kind of start feeling a little bit more normal, right? Um, so 100% is probably always too much when colorizing. Um, the opacity slider helps a lot in that regards. Now, <clears throat> that's one method of adding color to the photo. I don't prefer this method. Okay, that's in the instructions so that you know how to do it. Um, but <clears throat> um, I kind of prefer to do it more the way this next step has it. So I'm going to do a different method and go ahead and do his. Um, eyes. I'm, I'm going to skip the step of the pink here and do his eyes. And this is the way that I really prefer to do color. Um, I could have done this way for his face also. And it's basically just to go into this layer. Um, let's call this eyes. Okay. I'm going to turn off this face color for now so we can more clearly see what I'm doing. But what I'm going to do is just um, Pick my brush, pick a nice uh, color for his eyes. This says blue, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick a, a kind of uh, blue color that might work well for his eyes. Okay. And I'm just going to go in and just paint it right onto the canvas. Okay. Now you notice when you're painting directly on here, it's actually filling in those pixels. So it's filling the pixels up and it's covering what is underneath it. And you think, well, this isn't working for colorization. And you would be right until we take this layer and we change the blending mode. Remember how when we were doing the fill selection method and it had the blending mode and we chose color, color for the blending mode? Well, here um, we can do the exact same thing. We can just paint right onto the canvas and change the blending mode to color, and voila, there it is. It, it has filled it with just color, okay? And then, so what I'm gonna wanna do is mask out the black of the, um, forget the, the name of this, his pupil. Mask out the black and the pupil, because his pupil won't have blue, it will just have the um, black. And I'm gonna reduce the opacity here. Okay, now color isn't the only blending mode that works to add color into a photo. Okay, you can also look at a few other blending modes. There's two that typically can work well, um, maybe three. So multiply can also add color into an image. So I'm going to increase the opacity here. And what multiply does is not only does it add some of the color in, but it darkens it. Okay. Everything kind of in this group under the darken will darken the image in some way. You could try color burn to add color, which really makes it dark. Um, but at a much lower opacity, one of those methods might be um, achieve the effect you want. The other way to add color is to choose overlay. Okay, so I've got blue added in as an overlay, and that looks to work just about as well as if I were to choose color. I think overlay um, works a little bit better. It's a little bit more um, realistic, I think. And then if I drop the opacity a bit, then um, we got a somewhat realistic eye color. Okay, and now I can turn on his face again um, and adjust the opacity eyes based on the color of the face. Okay, so that's my much preferred way of adding color is instead of going through the whole selection and you doing fill, just paint it right onto the canvas. 
um, in the area that you want color to be. So I'm going to go in here to the hair and give the hair some color now. So I'll make a new layer. What hair color? And I'm going to pick, let's give the dude green hair, okay? I'm all for experimenting and having some fun. I've had people make him be kind of the joker. Um, and other classes that can work good too, if you wanted to give him some red mouth makeup and some white face paint, he could be the joker. And what I'm doing when I do this method is I'm just making sure that I get all the pixels covered with the color that I know needs it. And then we'll go back and adjust it after the fact. So um, I'm not changing the blending mode yet because I want to see exactly which pixels I'm covering. Just painting it right on top of the canvas. where I think he actually had some hair. Making sure to overlap all areas of where the hair would be. Okay, so I think our green hair is relatively covered now. So I'm going to change the blending mode here. I'm just going to mess with it a little bit. Let's try and multiply and see how that does. So that makes the hair quite dark, but at a lower opacity, it might work okay. Um, there's also color burn, which I'm not liking how that's kind of working. Let's see how overlay works. Mm, overlay is okay. I think we could get away with doing overlay here. Um, let's see, and the last method would be color. Let's see what color does. Color is a little bit too bright, I think. So I think it's between multiply and overlay, which overlay seems to be a little bit closer in tune to the rest of the image. So I'm going to leave that. So now that it's in place, and so now that we have the blending mode, we'll notice that some of it is overlapping in places that we don't want. So this is where we come in with a mask and we start cleaning up where um, where we don't want there to be color. Let's come in with a black paintbrush and always undo if you um, feel like you added color where or hit it where it shouldn't have been hitted. Okay, some kind of, it's really hard to see where his hairline is up here along um, where he had this kind of receding hairline, and that's fine. Just kind of use your better judgment to get the hair color in there where it should be. You'll see like there's this kind of green highlight. And if you were using brown or you know red or any other color, there would be this highlight where it overlaps the skin color. So that's definitely where you want to go in with the um, mask and kind of hide that out. Okay. Just hide it out by masking it. Okay, and there might be some skin overlapping up here that I don't want, so we'll go back to my face layer. And like there's a clear change in the color consistency where that's happening. So let me go back in and kind of 
hide wherever the skin color might be overlapping with the hair color. You have to decide which one you want to let sh show through, the skin or the hair in that part. Okay, and I see some highlight going on along the outside of the hair here. So if I go back to the hair layer, Around the edges where I had painted it in to overlap to make sure I got the color in, we might want to just take some of it back out. Okay, so there's my guy with green hair. Now what I can do is say I decide I don't like this green hair, then I would just command click in this layer and select those pixels and I'll fill them with whatever color I want. Okay, so this is where fill can be good. So I could go to um, Shift F5 to bring up my fill dialog. Um, and this time, uh, if I reselect color, I might want to choose like a brown color to give them some brown. And this time I'm going to leave the blending mode as normal because remember, I've already changed the blending mode in my layer. I don't want to reapply a different blending mode from this screen. So I'm just going to leave my blending mode as normal and hit OK. And, whoops, notice I had my... Um, I had my mask selected, and so it was trying to fill in that brown color in that mask. I need to make sure that I have my working layer selected when I go into fill. So I'll go back in, rechoose color. A nice brown color here. Blending mode is normal this time, and I'm going to hit OK. I notice that it fills that area with the brown color now. Okay, so um, now that I've changed the color, the Blending mode and the opacity might need some adjustment, so I'm just going to leave it on overlay for now and just uh, darken it up a little bit. Okay, and so there I've got, um, I've kind of got the color going in where I need it to be. Um, somehow there's still some green there. How did that happen? Not sure how that happened, but the way we can fix it is by reselecting our brown. So if I change this back to normal, and if you're ever trying to reselect a color you had used, you can't you can't do it with the opacity reduced and the blending mode off. Okay, because if I if I try to select the color that's in here right now, and I bring up my color picker and select that color. It does select a brown, but that's not the same brown color that I was using. So what I need to do is change this to normal and 100% opacity. And notice how it brings in the full filled pixels. Okay, And so from here I can select the brown I was using and go back in where I see this green and just paint back over it. So somehow when I Ah, uh, somehow when I made this selection on this layer, it didn't actually select all the pixels, probably because I was using a soft brush that's got like a fuzzy, um, fuzzy element to the sides, and so Photoshop maybe doesn't know which of those pixels it was supposed to be selecting or not, because I was using a soft brush, but that's okay. Kind of relaxing to just kind of paint in here. So I'm gonna everywhere I see the green pixels, I'm just gonna go back in with the brown and paint it. Okay, now I can change my blending mode back to overlay. Drop the opacity back down a little bit. And I can start to see now where I maybe need to add some more, uh, some more mask in. Okay, so this stuff is kind of a little bit distracting where the brown is overlapping onto the skin color. Some of the skin color does need to go.
And in some places the brown color needs to go. And the highlight with the brown over the skin tone is even along the edges is even more distracting than the green was, I think. So probably because the green was neutralized a bit by the pink in the skin. Okay, now here I think I want the hair color and not the face color. So let's go in, get rid of some of this skin color that's happening. And this picture is like low enough quality that we're not going to be able to really tell exactly what's, you know, what's skin and what's hair in some places, and that's fine. Just get it as close as you can, and you can just decide on one or the other. Um, certain areas, whatever think you think looks best. Okay, and I, I was zoomed in quite a bit there working and once we zoom out we see it doesn't really, it's not going to affect it as much as you think it does when you're zoomed in. Okay, so now we've got some hair color in. Okay, so again, there's the two different ways of doing it. I prefer to just paint right into the layer and then change the blending mode, but the fill tool is there if you need it. There are some cases where you might need to use that and it's easier to use than just using the, the normal paint on method. Okay, so we've got color in the hair, we've got color in the face. Um, one of the steps in the tutorial is to add some pinkish highlights onto his face to give it a little bit more of a realistic color. So I'm going to make a layer and call it pink here, and I'm going to choose a pink color. Um, and this is important for your projects too. Um, we will be colorizing some old photos. And these, this pink coloring kind of gives um, a depth of color and makes it seem like it's realistic. So you're going to want to remember to make sure you're adding some other tones than just one skin tone to the face. Okay, so if I add a little bit of pink here into the cheeks, um, maybe a dash on the chin and a little bit on the lips here. In fact, I'm gonna choose a little bit deeper color for the lips. So I'll make a new layer of lips. I'm going to call it a little bit redder. Okay. Now if I go back to the pink layer here, and I'm going to change this to... Excuse me. Okay. If I go back to the pink layer here, and I change this to color, and then I'm going to um, drastically reduce the opacity. It's just going to be a very small, almost imperceptible kind of um, addition of color into the face. And then I can always mask out where I think it might be too much. Okay, sorry. All right, so I've got a little bit of a pink highlight in his cheeks here. Do I need to mask any of it out? Maybe 
a little bit of masking, just a slight amount. Okay, and I've got the lips. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna drastically reduce the opacity, change the blending mode to color, and I need to reduce the opacity even more. because I've already got the pink in there too, so. Do I even need this layer? Okay, so now I've got two layers on the lips. I have pink and the reddish color on the lips. And I wanna mask both of those out at the same time and make sure I'm masking out the same area. So what I can do is just take those two layers that I need to add a mask to and put them in a group. And I've got this group here, I'm gonna call it lips. Okay, and I can actually add a mask to a group. And so now I've got this mask that's masking out the items in this group. And so I can go in with my brush and mask out both the pink and the red that I added to this guy's lips, okay? So just go in and I'm not trying to make mine look like the Joker, so just gonna get rid of a little bit of this extra color here. Um, and then I can reduce the opacity of the entire group um, altogether, okay? so. And I think it needs it. I think it, it was a little bit bright. I'm gonna go to the red of the lips and play with that a little bit. Doesn't need a lot, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit of color. Call it lips and cheeks. Okay, so now I've got some some facial tone added in there. And the last thing to do then is to colorize his jacket and the background. So let me do that real quick. Let me make a layer for the background. And what I'm gonna do is, let's pick a, let's see, what color background would he have? I'm thinking blue, we'll do a blue, maybe a purplish blue. To uh, a violet, I guess it would be called. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in, paint some violet in. Okay, and then what I can do is, I'll turn that layer off and I'll go to my quick selection tool and just select um, the guy here. I'm gonna these. Oh, okay. I'm working in, working in that background layer. You need to make sure you're working on a layer that um, has the items you want, or to choose sample all layers. But I'm gonna go in and just make a selection around the guy here. So basically, I'm selecting everything that isn't that background curtain. Is what I'm attempting to do. Okay. And this, the magic wand selector can be a little bit touchy sometimes. Okay, so I've selected um, our figure and his jacket. And now I'm gonna go back to this background layer and I'm going to, with that selection made, I'm gonna choose to create a new mask. And you'll see that it makes a mask outside of my selection. Okay, so that's exactly the opposite of what I need. So at this point, all I need to do is press Command I and it will invert that mask. Okay, so um, again, what I did is I made a selection of our guy using the quick selection tool. Okay, I selected the layer with the color in it and I pressed the mask button and it made a mask that was basically masking out everything outside of that selection, which was the opposite of what I need. So I just pressed Command-I. Command-I inverts um, the colors in a layer, okay? And so now I've got color on my background. I can go in and change the blending mode here. Um, let's try Multiply. Multiply makes it quite dark, but if I reduce the opacity here, um, it's maybe an okay purple color. Let's see what color burn looks like a little bit 
It works. Overlay lets in quite a few highlights, but we've been using overlay for the other um, layers and it seemed to work quite well. Let's see how color looks. And that one is maybe a little bit too bright. So I'm going to go with overlay again for, for this background. And then let me play with the opacity a little bit here. I don't need a ton of color in there, just a little bit. Okay, and finally, um, so this guy has on a shirt and a jacket. It almost looks like they're the same color in this image, but I'm going to treat them as two separate things. So um, let's make a new layer for the jacket. And we're going to make his jacket a maroon color. Pick a maroon. This dark, deep maroon color. And let's put my brush tool. Bring in some maroon color. Notice I'm overlapping all the way everything that I want colored. And then we can mask out what we don't want this maroon color to be applied to. A good place to start is by using this mask I've already created. So I can uh, right click on this and go to add mask to selection and then go back to my jacket layer and just make a mask using that and then invert it again. Okay, and that's applying the color right on top of the jacket there. And I'll change my uh, blending mode again. Let's try overlay is quite dark. Let's see what color does. Color works okay. Let's reduce the opacity a bit here and try some of these other ones. Multiply, mm, too dark. Color burn is too dark. Overlay at this reduced opacity. Yeah. Overlay works, I think. Let's see what color does again. Color's a little brighter. I think I'll go with the color blending mode at a slightly reduced opacity. Okay, so there's the maroon on the jacket. Now I just need the shirt. And let's give the shirt some blue tone. Guy is, is not very well color coordinated. I'm not the best at picking colors, but we'll go in and get some blue down here. Okay, and then I'm just going to uh, just going to mask out what I don't need, but first I'll go ahead and see how it's working here. Multiply at a reduced opacity. Mm. Color burn, too dark. Overlay. And color. I do color and just reduce the opacity again. That one seems to be pretty good. Okay, so now I need to go in here with a mask. Just kind of get where this is overlapping his skin a little bit. It's overlapping the background and the jacket some. Mask that out. Okay, so now my guy is colorized. Okay, let me move this out of the way a little bit here so you can see. 
<clears throat> okay, so we've got them repaired. We've got color in the hair and the eyes. Added a little bit of a pink tone to the cheeks. Um, he's got maroon um, in his jacket. He has blue in his shirt. Maybe I want to, in the shirt here, there's this zipper or something, or a shirt, another shirt underneath it that I don't want the blue in, so maybe I'll just go in and into my mask, take some of that blue out. And I better save while I'm thinking about it. Save, save. I did all that work without saving. Good thing my computer didn't crash. Okay, let me go back here and review um, the details here. It said to add some eye color in. It said to add some pink to the cheeks. Colorize the closing, clothing in the background. And that's the end of the instructions. So there we go. I When I look at all of my colorizing here, um, especially compared to here, I feel like it's maybe a little bit overdone, except for maybe the face. So I could put it all into um, I could put it all into a layer here, call my layer color, and maybe reduce the opacity of that layer a little bit, just to uh, tone down everything that's going on. The other thing I like to do with these is like his face, like if you look at the depth of objects in the photo, his face is on top. Um, the red jacket will be on top of the blue. All of that is on top of the purple background. And his lips and paint color are on top of the face. So it's good to keep those in order of how they are viewed. Um, just one, it's, it's a nice way of organizing your layers. And two, sometimes it matters. So for example, that pink color that I added should definitely be appearing on top of the skin and not below it. Um, otherwise, it's, it might look a little bit weird. So, um, so I've moved that lip and pinkness up. And if I kind of mess with the opacity of this overall again, um, I think that's good. Okay, so I've got my file, I've saved it, and it's time to turn it in. Let's go through those instructions. So I'm going to go back into Canvas here. And let me go in, I'm going to go into this as a test student so I can demonstrate how to, uh, how to do this. Okay, so I'm in here as a test student. We are working on the repair and color exercise. I need to submit my assignment now that I'm done with it, right? So first is this needs to be uploaded to your, um, your file sharing service. So I have Google Drive. Okay, I've already got some stuff here. So I've got my Photoshop folder here. Um, let me make a new folder for Unit 1. Okay, and inside of Unit 1, I'm going to put my Photoshop file I just made. So I already closed it, made sure it was saved. I'm going to quit Photoshop. And here's my um, repair file with the color and I'm just going to drop it right into my drive and I'm going to wait for it to upload. Okay, it's uploaded. It's got it here. Now, this this file is online but not everyone can view it except for you and your account. So, um, what you need to do is what you need to do is right click on this and go to get shareable link and when you go to get shareable link what that does is it makes the file viewable and downloadable to anybody that has the link okay so when i do that it notifies me anyone with the link can view it so now i can select this link and copy it 
And that is the, what I'm going to use to paste as a URL to turn in my assignment, okay? So if I go in here and click on Submit Assignment, I'm going to paste in that URL, okay? And make a comment here is my exercise, okay? And click Submit Assignment. Okay, and then it shows that you've turned it in, okay? So we'll just go to the submission details and double check. Um, this is the URL. I can click on it. It should open it. I need to go here, submission details. I go to view in a new tab, then it should open the file doesn't have a preview because it's a Photoshop file, but now I can go in and download it and I'll be able to view your work that way. Okay, And that's how we're going to upload files for, um, for sharing for critique also. So if you are using a different service than Google Drive, it's going to be very similar. Dropbox will work. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive will work. I just happen to uh, be familiar with Google products, but um, that's how you do it. That's how you submit your file, and um, that takes care of exercise one. Um, so I'm going to take a quick break from streaming here, and I will get into the um, presentation of the first project. Okay.